welcome back to The Breakfast once again. It's time for us to go straight into the major newspapers across the country this morning and share the biggest stories that we can find over there. We're also going to be joined this morning by Mr. Ademola Kingbola, the publisher of uh, the Podium Media. Hopefully also we can connect with Bulahon Olujede. He's, uh, of course, an economist and a public affairs analyst. And so um, it's going to be a full house this morning talking about these stories. Yes, indeed. Uh, we'll start things off with uh, the Daily Independent. But first, welcome, uh, Mr. Akingola. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for having me again today. Good morning. At least we didn't have any, we don't have any audio problems today. We hope it stays <laughs> that way for the course of the, uh, the time we'll be here. Um, okay, the Daily Independent, <laughs> customers resort. <laughs> <laughs> Customers resort to POS amid disappointing bank ATMs. Uh, CBN promises to investigate allegation of cash shortage. Um, that's um, another one for you this morning. Terrorists trying to enter Southwest through Oyo. That's the governor raising an alarm. And there is a piece, I actually read it a little. What a year! 2020, oh, yeah, uh, a rundown of some of the major events. You might want to go read that a bit. Um, it's on page 24 of the paper. Our president is on the news this morning. Buhari vows to wrestle inflation aggressively in 2021. Ask CBN not to give money for food importation. Um, those are at the top of the paper. Uh, we also have this one that says... We also have this one that says uh, Nigerians fed up with Buhari. APC want us back in 2023. That's um, the PDP. Mm. There's uh, two writers to it. Uh, PDP's return is a figment of their imagination. APC is fighting back. Nigerians are tired of both parties. That's the NCF. What does the NCF mean? You have to take a look at the paper to see that. Uh, crossover night can ask churches to close services by 11 p.m. I think that would defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? It's supposed to be I'm not sure what crossover. the use is, really. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's obviously not going to be called a crossover night you know, anymore. If it's but I don't, I don't see that. what the use is, really. If you have it shut down at 11 p.m., you That's know, exactly it, it's, what it's, it's the same people who are going to be there between 8 and 11 that would be there between 8 and 12 or 8 and 1 a.m. So what's really the use? If you're going to go to church, go to church. If you don't want the churches to open at all, then let them, you know, shut it down. It's, it's well, hypocrisy. And I'll quickly mention, um, in Enugu State, they've put out an order um, saying that uh, crossover services also would not be allowed. I think, you know, they would not be allowed to run um, that night. But the same Enugu State had a week-long carnival that had... Crowds gathered without any bit of social distancing. I guess we'll get to hear distancing. from Mr. Kingbola um, in a bit on that one as well. Uh, Cross overnight can ask churches to close service by 11 p.m. NIMC adopts booking system for NIN enrollment. COVID-19 second wave, 16 out of every 100 sample tested positive. That's a scary one uh, from uh, the government. Let's come to you. Mr. Kingbola, yeah. which of these would you want to take on first? Yeah, let me start quickly with um, the directive by Khan asking churches to close services by 11 p.m. I think we're just too hypocritical in Nigeria. What difference does it make if services close at 11 p.m. or they close at 4 a.m.? What I think Khan should be concerned with is asking churches not to even have those services at all. With the kind of feedback we are getting on uh, the increasing wave of COVID-19, we shouldn't be having services at this time. So it doesn't matter whether they close at 11 p.m. or they close at 3 a.m. As long as there's going to be a public gathering beyond 50, then there will be a problem. So for me, churches should focus more on streaming their services online. Get everybody to connect online. And anyway, um, this ritual of, oh, I'm going to be in church by 12 a.m., the new year must meet me in church. It goes beyond that. It is what you do throughout the year that matters. Where, where 2021 20, meets you doesn't determine how your year is going to go. So really, our focus should be on ensuring that we reduce public gathering as much as possible, okay? 
Secondly, let's look at the issue of Buhari vows to resume inflation aggressively. It's not about how much you vow, whether actively or dangerously. It, 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 it has to do with how you apply a combination of monetary and fiscal policies to address inflation. Okay? The inflation in Nigeria is in double digits, and there are fears that this will even get worse in 2021. So what should government be doing? Cut down on public spending. Inflate the economy, let there be money, okay? Then let's focus on productive activities. As long as we are not a producing nation, we will continue to depend on importation. So trying to stop CBN from allocating money for food importation is it is a panic measure which has never worked and will never work. Because the truth is that the, the, the local producers are not meeting up with demand. Rice producers are not meeting up with demand. Poultry farmers are not meeting up with demand. So let's focus more on increasing capacity internally before we talk of stopping food importation. Do, does the, so, Mr. Kimball, I'm going to ask, um, does, the, Mr. does the president yes, have the yes. powers to order the CBN um, not to release money? I really do not know. But if, as long as the CBN governor reports to the president, he may have that kind of latitude to, 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 to provide some guidance, okay? But the point is, whether he has the power or not, economic policies cannot be decreed into existence. You can't, you can't promulgate them, okay? There must be market-facing solutions that are realistic and that are quite practical to the challenges that we face as a nation. Okay, so what we have done all through 2020 is, is basically knee-jack responses. Okay, trying to rush into taking action, but like Obasanjo Utumi and others are saying, the strategies we are adopting are wrong. The strategies are, are basically wrong because we believe that we can hold what we don't have control over. Look at foreign exchange. Okay, the strength of a national currency is a function of its productive capacity. If we're not producing for export, we're not earning foreign exchange, you can't do anything about your exchange rate. It will continue to depreciate. All right. Because there's more Naira chasing the few dollars that are available. Okay, let, let, let's let's quickly yeah. let's quickly then bring in um, uh, Mr. Bulan Lojede. Um, he's an economist and a, a public affairs analyst. Also, I, I I would like you to quickly speak on the um, story concerning the president ordering the CBN not to give money for food importation. It says also Buhari vows to wrestle inflation aggressively in 2021. Mr. Lojede, what do you, what do you think? Well, for a nation that is not producing enough, um, we, we cannot have a blanket order like that. We have to have a, a more systematic way of managing it. Um, when you look at rice, for example, as of last year, Nigeria was only producing 55% of what we consume. So we need to consider the fact that there is 45% out there that we need to bring in. Otherwise, the price of the 55 percent gets so high that the ordinary citizen cannot afford it. And that is a problem for food sufficiency and hunger in the land. So it is something that requires a delicate management. A, a blanket ban will not cut it. Okay. All right. Let's then, uh, of course, bring you in with... Uh the punch newspapers this morning see what we can find over here it says here the federal government adopting wrong strategies uh, to address bad economy and that is from former president to lushegun obasanjo and uh, professor pat utomi and others it also says on the punch default on loans with collateral worsened in the fourth uh, quarter and that's from the cbn bishop kuka is also in the news saying i never called for a coup against buhari and i think um, Mr. Lujide, you, you may start with that one um, firms grown as ministry delays expert uh, quarter approval. Buhari to sign 2021 budget on Thursday. Also on the punch, January will be tough. Spike in COVID-19 infections imminent. And that's from the NCDC. Comply with directive on crossover service can tells churches. And also assailants killed two women in Ondo State. One killed as, and scores injured as Oshun rival gangs clash. Uh, the last one I will quickly share this morning. 
Um, of course, it's, you know, all the connecting stories to the federal government's wrong strategies. It says, don't blame God for Nigeria's woes, Obasanjo's uh, tells nation's leaders. Uh, we are facing hunger. Insurgents dislodging farmers, says May Lafia. And of course, I will fight food inflation in 2021, 20, oil industry in turmoil. And that's from the president. So let's kick off, first of all, with Bishop Kuka and uh, controversy over his uh, Christmas message. Okay. Uh, Bishop Kuka did not directly call for a coup, and I think we need to put that in context. Did he indirectly time, call for a coup? Because it's an elder statement, is a man with a huge audience. I mean, I have been listening and reading Bishop Kuka uh, for over 20 years, when he was in the Catholic Secretariat then. So when someone has that kind of an audience level, he also has to be careful about what he says. A whole lot of what he said was well, all right. But at a point in time, he had mentioned the fact that, oh, uh, if this, if what Buhari is doing was being done by a southerner, uh, by a southern Christian, there would have been a coup. Now, that is uh, a statement that is neither here nor there and could be misinterpreted as he inviting a coup saying that, oh, this man that is there, he will have been removed if he was a Christian. So why is somebody not removing him now? Via a coup. We must not, under any condition, go back to the Egypt of military coups. For those who lived through those years, we know that what we still have right now um, is a whole lot of liberty that we need to build on, not to go back to Egypt of, of, of military coups. It so, doesn't do anybody any good. So, so is I'm it, glad is that it, he's coming out to say, to yeah, clarify Mr. his Ajide. statement, to say that he wasn't calling for coup. There is no room for coup. Coup Mr. is anti-development, and we must not even think in that direction. Mr. Alojide, yes, you know, from what you've said, you know, it's maybe a wrong use of you know, words, and he um, went too far with trying to express a particular point. But do, do you, you know, see sense in the point that he, he would try to make? Sorry, I, I, I didn't hear that. I'm saying maybe, you know, it, it is a young, um, wrong use of words uh, by Bishop Kuka, and he maybe went extreme with the words he used to stress the point. But do you agree or see any sense in the point he was trying to make? Yes, the point he was trying to make was significantly correct. Everybody is conscious of what is going on in the security space in Nigeria. We have, we have become an insecure nation with a whole lot of banditry, uh, insurgency, kidnapping, all sort of crime all over the whole place. So Bishop Cooker was hitting the nail on the head with the state of the nation as far as, the, as, far as insecurity is concerned. And even economy, you right. know, but the, uh, the, 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 the wrong choice of word in the, in the coup issue uh, was a battle. And you can be sure that that is what mischief makers would dwell on. All right. So for, for him and, and his huge audience, he has to be careful. Okay, let's uh, take on uh, Daily Sun now. Mr. Akimbola, I'll be coming to you. Again, FG stops Forex for food import. I think you talked about that for a second. Uh, claims seven states mm -hmm. producing enough rice. Man, farmers group, others call for caution. Um, the cooker's story is also captured here. Uh, we have COVID-19. Four doctors die. 472 health workers infected in Abuja. Uh, we are not at loggerheads with government over new guidelines. Can states responsible for rising cases? That's the um, presidential task force. Uh, that's a PTF. Yep. Um, there's another one here. Alleged forgery. Court accepts uh, Governor Obasaki's nomination form in evidence, dismisses suit against Izei Yamo. Uh, that's, um, FG reopens more borders this week as SPARTs foresee spike in Forex rate. Over to you now, Mr. Kingbala, which of these would you want to take on? Yeah, thank you. Let me quickly weigh in on the um, Matthew yeah. Asan Kuka issue. I've gone through that interview, I've gone through that statement, that Christmas message a couple of times diligently. There is nothing that the man said that has not been said before. There's absolutely nothing. And everything he has said is right on point. 
and I do I really do not agree that he, he used what wrongly. He said if what Buhari is doing were to be done by certain president, such a president would have been removed. That is not calling for a coup. He was just reminding us of how how, how, how sectional the nation has been. He was reminding us of the fact that we do not even have a nation. And I, I'm very sure that he was sending a very strong message to the northern part of the country. So I don't agree that he has said anything wrong. People definitely, we twist words, we, we, we draw wrong inferences, but everything that the man said is pretty much on point. Let's come back to the issue of COVID-19. It, it, it's unfortunate that, um, quite frankly, Nigerians have not taken this issue seriously. We still think that this is a huge joke. And doctors losing their lives, it's quite unfortunate. And the appeal that one can just make is that everybody should take it more seriously, okay? Government should do all it can to ensure that everything is done. Citizens should stop taking it for granted, okay? We're talking about uh, Forex, um, FG stopping Forex for food imports, which Mr. Bola has, 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 has spoken about, which I also mentioned earlier on. You do not control what you do not have influence on. There's, a, there's, food, there's food subject in Nigeria, apart from rice production, I talk about poultry. Poultry farmers cannot even meet more than 45%. So let's focus on enhancing local capacity before we can talk of stopping food importation. If you stop food importation, the price of local products will go beyond the reach of the average man. Okay. You, you, there's another story you talk about here. Um, Which of them? The alleged forgery court now? accepts uh, governor. Okay. Uh, FG reopens more. Okay, FG reopens more borders this week as uh, experts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. FG reopens more borders for this spike in foreign states. Yeah. As the borders have been opened, what are the measures being put in place to avoid the repeat of why the borders were closed in the first instance? It's not enough to heed public outcry to reopen the borders. Are we ready to man those borders? Are we ready to stop smuggling and importation of banned products? Those are the things we should be focusing on. Customs should be telling us that, yes, we have used the period of this closure to strengthen our capacity. We have we, we, we have used this period to plug loopholes and we are sure that everything will be okay. We are reopening the borders just for the fun of it. So it's going to be back to business as usual. That is my concern. Okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, quickly yeah. jump to the Nigerian Stop Tribune uh, this morning and see what we can find over there. You can also spot a story from uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka um, on the Nigerian Tribune, the top right corner there. It says, I didn't call for a coup. Uh, Kuka spoke our minds. Nothing must happen to him, and that is yeah. from the um, ECWA. Uh, scores of bandits killed as jet bombed, uh, bombard uh, the heart of some visa forest, says the uh, defense headquarters. COVID-19 running riot. 16 out of every 100 patients are positive, says the PTF. Can urges compliance with national directive on crossover service. And um, also... Or your band Street Carnivals says 90 cases recorded in two weeks as there are also two more doctors die in Abuja. Uh, Move on from that, Southwest PDP caretaker committee nullifies suspension of five leaders. WhatsApp to stop working on millions of phones from January 1st. I'm not sure why that is. And um, uh, Ode Kunle, a member of uh, Shage com committee, dies in Abuja. Um, Nigerians responsible for their woes, stop blaming God, uh, and that is from a messenger sad, once again. Sad. And also, El Rafai kickstarts community policing in Kaduna. Uh, so let, let's uh, quickly uh, be, be get your thoughts on the scores of bandits killed as the uh, jets bombard the hearts of uh, Sambisa Forest. Uh, I'm going to you know, get your views on our approach uh, towards uh, fighting insurgency. We've continued to see airstrikes and, um, you know, pictures and videos of army, um, you know, from the defense headquarters of uh, bandits and terrorists killed, but it still doesn't seem to be answering, um, you know, or to be the answer because, of course, you know, there's still kidnappings, there's still killings and, and the likes. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the approach yeah. that we're taking? Mm -hmm. 
well, I, I see too much of propaganda in all of this. I mean, just like you said, if the Nigerian army has been that decisive and that successful in its war against the bandits, the security situation in Nigeria won't be as bad as it is. We never had it so bad. It's never been as scary as we are today. So whatever effort they've been making, they, they alone are the ones seeing the results. They are not seeing the results. When Buhari came, they said, oh, Boko Haram has been technically defeated. For the first time I heard the word technical defeat. Five years down the line, here we are. We, they said, oh, they've, 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 been, they've been destabilized. Obviously, that has not worked. So the Nigerian army should stop or should reduce propaganda. We know that propaganda is part of war, but we shouldn't be deceiving ourselves. Every we have stories of bandits being displaced. The same bandits come back to terrorize the people. So we're right. still in womb. Okay. So we, we, we are surely not doing something right. Okay. We missed a we, we we missed a story on the front page of independence. Customers resorting to POS amid disappointing bank ATMs. Okay, I actually mentioned it. Okay. You can speak it, on it, that it, in it's so seconds. unfortunate that Nigerian banks time. don't spend money on IT in oh. Yeah. Oh, you okay. can speak on that in 30 seconds. Nigerian That'll banks don't spend quality money on IT infrastructure. Oh, yeah. So, Nigerian banks should learn to invest in IT infrastructure. They spend too much money on mundane things, exotic buildings, big cars, but they are not spending on architecture, I mean, on, on, on customer service architecture that will end the delivery of efficient services. And that's not too unfortunate. All right, Mr. Ademola Akingbola, thank you very much. I know it's pretty early where you're at. We are grateful for your time. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you for having me. It's I appreciate our, it. Our oh. pleasure. Uh, we missed uh, Gbola Olojide. The network just uh, yanked him up at some point. But as always, he's a friend of the house. We thank you very much, Mr. Olojide, in absentia, uh, for your time uh, with us this morning. I'm uh, concerned about how they would do uh, uh, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with, with you. But well, you can't shake hands. So how do you do that? I would do like this now. <laughs> That's the new ritual. We use our legs to touch. Uh, we'll go on a short break. When we come back, we'll be looking at what happened on this day in history.